Bon la cal, my garden of roses. Let's spend some time just talking right off the cuff about Facebook and Twitter for a little bit. After I did that uh, video yesterday on the New York Times report, news started coming out that Twitter was actively purging bots. And while Twitter themselves haven't actually responded to any comment about whether or not they're doing so, large accounts all across the server service have shown drastic drops in the ballpark of 50 to a million subscribers or followers lost. Likewise, the same is happening over at Facebook, whereas instead of just trying to get rid of the bots, Facebook is pursuing a very desperate policy of sending fake um, emails, or not fake emails, but emails to people suggesting that they've po someone else has possibly tried to log into their account, trying to get people to log into their accounts again because people have left Facebook. We're coming into a, a new age with technology, and I talk about this off and on, but things are breaking down for these media giants like Facebook and Twitter, and to some degree even Google, who's now actively supporting things you wouldn't think Google would support. Like uh, recently they had to um, take a um, gay dating app off of their Google Play Store in Indonesia, despite the fact that if you were to speak to anyone at Google, you would think that they very strongly support gay dating apps on their platform. But because Indonesia requested it, there it goes, it disappears. They do the exact same thing for China whenever they request something go away. And these companies are at the whim, not only of these giant companies, but also the giant follower bases of their verified or celebrity users. It's quite fascinating if you ask me because I think we might actually be moving towards the next stage in social technology on the internet, which is extremely important. Uh, with services like BitChute growing slowly but rather steadily, they recently renamed themselves to Speak Out, S-P-K-O-U-T. However, you can still reach them at bitchute.com. And uh, companies like Twitter literally purging away the bots and exposing just how bare their system really is. I think Twitter is going to be losing a lot of its market share and companies like Gab, Mines, and others are going to be able to compete fairly in the market for once, which is going to be a beautiful step forward. Facebook in particular I find interesting because earlier this month they made the announcement that they were going to try and refocus on connecting people with their real friends and family as compared to promoting uh, people's, or rather businesses, posts and the most popular posts that have nothing to do with a person's interests. And in turn, this has actually led to Facebook losing uh, their monthly viewership. In, I, and I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that they're doing away with the business model that made them an advertising giant, and more so to do with the fact that they are just far behind the times. Twitter as well. We're looking at platforms that have existed for 13 years now that haven't done much at all to change their business model. Sure, Twitter added uh, live updates of the retweets and likes, and Facebook has cre ad added live updates of their feed it's in general. Uh, but in general, but mostly these things have stayed relatively identical to what they were 50, you know, 10 years ago with slight visual updates to make it look like something new has come. The largest changes to come to Twitter and Facebook are in regards to the ability to purchase and promote your posts, a service that in and of itself, they're punishing others for doing, doing the exact same thing, essentially. Uh, with the news that came out of the New York Times about Davumi, a company that sells followers and sells um, retweets and likes, being under attack by two states now, New York and Florida, as well as under investigation by 
uh, Twitter itself, we're learning a lot more about these systems and a lot more about the hypocrisy that exists. Because you can condemn Devumi day and night for selling bot followers, but how is that any different than the people who pay nearly twice the amount for half of the uh, possible viewing audience directly to Twitter or directly to Facebook? You can spend $40 on an advertisement on Twitter and you're only going to reach about 10,000 people. You can spend $20 on Devumi and you will end up making possibly in the ballpark of 100,000 views in addition to the 1,000 likes or retweets that you purchased. And with these companies fighting so hard against this, eventually they're going to have to acknowledge that they themselves have created this market. They themselves have set a very high waterline as to how much it costs to be a promoted viewer or a promoted poster. And at the end of the day, your people are still going to be paying Twitter and still going to be paying Facebook in order to have that desired uh, highlighted spot within people's news feeds. Uh, as much as Facebook might try, they are desperate for people to come back to their platform and that is why they are sending out these emails saying, oh, I think someone logged into your account. You better come log in and check just to make sure. Even though when you go and log in, there's no security request uh, like they normally do. I mean, you know how Facebook works. If someone tries to log into your account, Facebook puts you through this little gauntlet of little modal pop-up windows that tell you you need to add a phone number, you need to verify your phone number, you need to verify your email address, you should probably change your password, and yet, these emails coming from Facebook asking you to log in do nothing of the sort. And it's not like they're doing away with the business model of allowing people to promote posts, either of these companies are doing away with the model of allowing people to promote posts by paying a substantial advertising fee. We're still going to be seeing them slowly whittling away both bots and users of the platform, as we have seen over the last year especially, uh, moving to Gab, moving to Minds, moving away from just using social media as their primary outlet for communication in general. A lot more people have been joining YouTube, for example, and YouTube in turn had to turn up their uh, turn up the minimum requirements for their uh, um, for viewership in order to be a part of the uh, paid uh, what's the word I'm looking for partner program. And uh, we we might end up seeing something similar with Twitter and Facebook, even though they don't do partner programs themselves, they might end up having to in order to keep up with the growing market, and it's only going to screw them more. Now me, I don't actually go on Facebook very often. If I get a direct message on Twitter, I'll check it, but I only about a third of the time even hear the notification sound for it, and I spend much more time on Gab and Minds, and I spend most of my time on YouTube, honestly, as my social media platform of choice, although uh, BitChute is certainly climbing the ranks for me pretty fucking quickly. More and more people prefer using Telegram or Discord to communicate with people directly rather than trying to have conversations within a limited number of characters or attempting to get the first comment on a Facebook post or first response on a Twitter post. And I really do believe this is the direction that we're going. We're going to see more people wanting chat applications which they can speak in groups or directly with people they like instead of having to navigate around a very unwelcoming platform that creates little silos and echo chambers based on friends lists. Uh, but I also think it's going to go one step further than that. I also think we're going to be seeing platforms. Minds recently made the announcement that they're going to be uh, putting in a uh, cryptocurrency backing and, a, uh, and Gab has repeatedly pointed out that they are working to back their platform with a blockchain. 
And this is a major step in the right direction, although we are still in the very early days of applying blockchain, a blockchain to the internet. I mean, people love talking about what blockchain can do, but it's important to recognize that blockchain is a, a ledger. It's immutable, and that's going to make it that's going to bring up the same complaints that Twitter already has, for example, right? You can't edit your Twitter posts. And you, if you post something on a blockchain-based social network, you're not going to be able to edit that either. Meanwhile, Discord has a constantly growing user base, despite its very questionable terms of service in which they can essentially use your, your entire chat room, everything that's said on the platform for, in, uh, you know, they collect data on everything you say, and I'm not a huge fan of that. User privacy and user security are going to be two of the major factors if we are able to see large investment in a next phase of social media. Blockchain is also going to play a very important role, though I don't think in the ways people uh, believe it to be. I'm almost positive blockchain is going to serve instead of as a direct layer on which everything is placed, rather a backup layer of sorts, in which it starts with a message queue, but the message queue is going to basically give you time where you can edit and modify your posts, you can comment and uh, interact with what you're doing efficiently while uh, while this uh, uh, and while the blockchain manages the message queue and then later at a later point maybe six hours later 12 hours later solidifies what you've said into that ledger in order for the, the system to run more efficiently uh, one thing about Twitter is it's People don't realize just how egregiously large their database has become. There's a reason that Twitter has to delete old posts. There's a reason that Twitter has to basically compress your timeline after about 12 hours. And that's because, let's face it, they don't have the infrastructure to support all of the messages that have been passed, as small as they may be, across the last 13 years. Facebook, likewise, has much better infrastructure, but they, po they uh, have the exact same problem, and if you don't go out of your way to essentially lock something into your timeline, your historical timeline, or identify something as an important post to you, it'll eventually vanish. Now, most people don't go looking for old posts on Facebook, but those of us who do have recognized that Facebook and Twitter are playing essentially the same game. I would really like to see these social networks lose their hegemony and more social networks open up. As much as everyone says, oh, I'm on Twitter and I wish you were there, and as much as it's caused a problem for me on my, you know, my social media endeavors to actually work, uh, to actually separate myself from Twitter, I'm glad I have because Twitter itself really doesn't promote intelligent conversation. And I'd argue that any platform that has the kind of delay between messages and the indirect communication methods that Twitter and Facebook use is going to be very difficult for having meaningful conversations. It's going to stand in the way, and we need platforms that are more effectively conversational. And I keep mentioning Discord, but I don't like Discord much either, and I'd love to see more options. Hell, if I get to the point where I'm feeling strong enough and my brain is working well enough, which it hasn't been the last few weeks, I might even try to build one on my own, taking advantage of web torrent technology, a technology I think is far more efficient and effective to use for social media than blockchain. However, it doesn't have the popularity or the financial connection that blockchain does. And as such, is going to take a lot more work and a lot more patience to get it to move forward. I'm just idly thinking about these things, and if I do try to pursue a platform, or rather an application, that takes advantage of WebTorrent for the sake of direct communications, I will certainly keep you guys up to date. But for now, 
it might be time to take a peek at those largest followers or largest people you follow on Twitter and see just how many followers they've lost because most of them are bots and the rest of them are people who are just sick of the platform. Bonsoir, mon chance. Mm -hmm.